Hello, my name is Emmy DeGrappa. Each week, we bring you stories asking our guests the question why. We learn about passion, purpose, and the human experience. Brought to you by Wyoming Humanities, with the generous support of the Wyoming Community Foundation, this is What's Your Why? Today, we are talking to David Rahm. David Rahm is a filmmaker and co-founder of Wild Excellence Films. Welcome, David. Hi, Emmy. Uh, thank you for having me today. Well, I love the name of your company, and I want to know how you came up with that. Was that, a, was that a tough one? Because there's so many different film-making companies out there in the world today? Sure. It was extremely difficult. <laughs> but we have a friend who lives in Wyoming in the Sunlight Basin area. And we, we spent a lot of time there, of course. And we saw her book, and it's called The Wild Excellence. And it's an amazing book by author Leslie Patton. And we love the name. So, <laughs> I mean, the, her story is incredible. She could be her own uh, documentary film. And we've talked to her, tried to talk her into it a couple times. <laughs> but... She's a, this amazing woman, and, uh, you know, she lives in the Sunlight Basin, in a really wild and remote area, and she wrote this book about her experience about coming to Wyoming from California. So we love the title. So we just wrote to her, and the title's based on a poem by uh, Pablo Nareda, I think that's the way they say it. He is a Chilean poet, and, um, I mean, he's long since passed, but a pretty well-known Chilean poet, and... Uh, so it, it's from one of his poems called The Wild Excellence. And, and the point behind it is that wilderness has its own form of excellence. You know, it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't have the judgment. Of the, you know, it's just as in its pure and natural state, it is already excellent. So that's kind of how we, you know, want our films to be kind of wild and pure, you know, appeal to a lot of people like nature does. So that's how we came up with, with the title. So we asked, we asked Leslie Patton, the author, if we could use it. And she goes, well, it's not really mine, but sure, you can use it. And we ended up being friends with her and we went out to see her and visit her at her home and spend time with her and her dog and went on a big hike. And now we're kind of friends. So that's a real bonus for us. What came first, your, your love for filmmaking or your love for wildlife and conservation? I would think wildlife and conservation, we just could never, I mean, Melissa, my wife, one of, one of the partners of Wild Excellence was, you know, a very good photographer for a long time. And we kind of got away from it for a little while. We had a newspaper in in the Wyoming area for, for a little while back in 2002, 2004. Um, so we were always trying to figure out how to get back out there. And we just started doing some other short films, like around Pennsylvania, where we live. And um, so we're just trying, we were just trying to always figure out a way to, you know, call attention to these amazing places and this amazing country where we live and, and the incredible wildlife that surrounds us. I mean, if anything, this current crisis has taught us, it's look at the wildlife <laughs> that surrounds us, you know, and you see that a lot in Wyoming probably, but, you know, it's pretty hard for us here in Pittsburgh to, you know, really get a full wildlife experience. It's just, you know, this land's really segmented. There's there's not a lot of, you know, open space. I mean, we do have our areas, but mostly we have to travel to pretty far away just to, you know, get a glimpse at like some elk or something. So you live in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Yeah. And what was your journey to Wyoming. What story were you following that brought you to Wyoming in the first place? I think we got married in 1999, and our first trip out west was to New Mexico, and that was to Bosque del Apache, and we just we had an amazing time there. But then we started talking about Yellowstone, so I guess we went to Yellowstone 2001, maybe it was 2000. We just couldn't go anywhere else after that. <laughs> I mean, we've been some small places, but anytime we could afford it, and we just always go to Yellowstone. So once we started going to the park, 
you know, most of the park is in, in Wyoming. We, you know, started venturing farther, farther out, like down in the Cody. Then when we had our newspaper called the Bear Tooth Times, we really got into Wyoming and, and um, just found it, you know, just a spectacular place. And the people were always just so welcoming and nice. And, you know, it was kind of got in our DNA. And now I remember we were pulled over on the road one time in the park and we were talking to another couple there. And they're like, all our friends say, you know, there's other places to visit besides Yellowstone. <laughs> and we just say, well, you know, not for us either. So for them too, you know, it's always about Wyoming and Yellowstone. So when you fell in love with Yellowstone and what was your, what was your story and your passion to create the film that you created about the bald eagle? Is it the bald um, eagle or is it the golden eagle? It is the golden eagle. Oh, thank That's you okay. for that correction. <laughs> yeah. What is the name of the film? Oh, First of all, this is an amazing question. The film is called Golden Eagles Witnesses to a Changing West. Okay. And it's really about Golden Eagles in the, in the Bighorn Basin. It's some, some outside, some in Teton, you know, mainly in Wyoming, though, uh, a little bit in the park, maybe. But it's really about the sagebrush steppe habitat and the Golden Eagles, which are doing okay, but they're under tremendous amount of pressure because of their prey species. So it really, it's um, the work with the Center of the West and, and Dr. Charles Preston, who was curator of the, you know, the Nancy Carroll Draper Natural History Museum for many, many years. So we ended up becoming friends with um, Dr. Preston, Charles Preston, and um, he works out of the Center of the West, and we have a relationship with them, too. And so we thought through Leslie Patton, we met Dr. Preston. We were looking for owls one day, and we couldn't, great gray owls, and we couldn't find them anywhere. In fact, we still never seen one in Wyoming. And we just happened to mention it to Leslie Patton, the author of The Wild Excellence. She goes, oh, well, my boss down at the center of the West, he knows where all those owls are. So we ended up talking to him, and he's this very well-known and well-respected scientist at, and curator at the at the center. Or the West, so we've always loved Golden Eagles. In fact, Melissa and I, that's kind of how we met through a Golden Eagle here in Pennsylvania, which is a story in itself. But so that, that's kind of how we got into this project. And it's a long, it's a long process. Anytime you're doing something for, you know, PBS Nature, it's, it's a really long process, you, you know, but uh, we're, we're getting closer to full production. So we're pretty excited about that. And with your help, too, Wyoming Humanities, it's a huge help to us. So thank you. Well, absolutely. And that's why I wanted to have this discussion with you, because you are one of our grantees. And when we give grants, we, we really want to, you know, dig into what is the meat and the passion in this grant that, you know, what, what we want to ask you is, why do you do what you do? Why should we care and what's important about your work? Why you should care for people in Wyoming. You know, we're conservation filmmakers, but we're not anti-development or anything like that. That's ridiculous. That's a, that's a dead argument. I mean, <laughs> people have to live, and, and you need people. You need wild spaces, too. You know, there's always a compromise. But when I went to Cody, I haven't been to Cody for 14 years. The southern end down towards, once you come out of the main you know, you pass the center of the West, you're heading towards the end of the park. I didn't even recognize that. You're heading down towards Wapiti. That's how, that's how built up it was. So the West is changing. It's changing particularly fast. And I don't even think I said that to a few local people. And they're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, these buildings weren't here when I was here. They're like, well, what are we going to do? You know? And I was like, well, we're just through our filmmaking. We just want you to know that, you can have both. You can have conservation and a good economy and jobs and, and uh, developing, you know, spaces that you need for businesses. I mean, we're a business. We're pro-business. So, you know, we just want to make sure that, um, you know, everything, you know, look at what you have. I mean, that's tremendous. I mean, we just don't have that here, like I mentioned, in Pennsylvania. <laughs> you, know, you know, because of where we are, we, we just have a tremendous assets, wildlife and tourism and dollars being spent 
you know, just to see a buffalo or a antelope or something. So that's what we really care about. And we, you know, when species are in decline, you know, there's a reason they're in decline. And some sometimes it's not human cause. Sometimes it's another cause. And, you know, through our films, if we can exp- inspire people to care or maybe take a look at this a little different, you know, we can save many species, even our own. So that's really why we do this. I like that last part, even our own. So tell me the threats that you see that are increasing for the Golden Eagle. One threat that no one even knew about. Like when they put up power lines, like Golden Eagles have this massive wingspan. Mm -hmm. You know, it's six to eight feet, you know. So when they put up power lines, and, and, you know, you have to have power, you know, but if you just do it a little bit differently, like add a little extension at the top, then the eagles can't rest there. And their wings, you know, once they cross the line, that's when they get electrocuted. So that cuts down tremendously. And, you know, the power companies aren't going around thinking, oh, you know, we're just going to do whatever we want. No, they're they're trying to comply. They like eagles, you know. But then when you have incidents, so you know, like electrocution, that, that's a huge problem. And, and we can all work together on a solution. And, you know, there's grants for companies and they usually very, 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 very open to working with scientists and conservationists. So we all have to work together, but electrocution is a problem, lead poisoning. You know, there's a place in the Sunlight Basin where they were doing target shooting and it was in BN- on BLM land. Bureau of Land Management land, and they didn't even know they were shooting underneath the Golden Eagle's nest. We're not trying to fringe on anybody's rights, but they didn't really have to be shooting right there. When they found out, they were kind of really shocked to know that, you know, and there's all that lead in the, in the ammunition and everything. So, you know, plus the disturbance, eagles will abandon the nest, if, you know, if they get enough disturbance. So, you know, there's collisions with cars and, you know, resources, you know, there's like the Teton Raptors that are doing an amazing job of rehabbing injured eagles, but some don't recover. And their po- our study, our film is really about the Dr. Preston's scientific, amazing scientific research into, you know, the prey species. No one really went into the nest until Dr. Preston started rappelling down into the nest. And there's everything in there, bones, there's live animals, there's snakes, you know, everything an eagle would eat, you know, and we have it in our little short film trailer. We show kind of what's what they collect in a nest. And that's how he was able to determine, you know, like it's really about rabbits. If rabbit populations crash, for you know any number of reasons, disease or or habitat loss or you know just reproductive rates, eagle eagle populations just crash right along with them. So it's important you know to see well you know what's affecting the rabbits, and it goes on and on and on. You know, well rabbits eat this, and <laughs> you know that's what's so interesting about filmmaking. You could you can kind of cover all that in a, in an hour, you know worth of filming and, um, you know, an hour documentary. And then, you know, it, it's big help to, to land managers and to conservationists and to residents too. You know, maybe a resident puts in a, say, Hey, I want to help these rabbits and fix up their yard a little bit. You know, there's big spaces out there, or maybe, you know, they change things a little bit, you know, with their habitat or, you know, section off places for wildlife. And then they begin to recover. That is really, you know, I think so informational to talk about those serious challenges that you just mentioned. And, you know, the fact that people aren't trying to be um, intrusive, but we are, you know, and but the fact that you can educate people and create a, a beautiful film that tells a story. And so I thank you so much, David, for your time talking to me today. Thank you so much, and thank you for your support. You know, there's one scene in the film, you know, it's about Native Americans' relationship to the Golden Eagle, and, you know, it was just very hard to get funding to do that one scene, and that's where Wyoming Humanities came in. You know, we really needed help doing that, and it's so important not only to Native peoples, but to everyone to realize that there's a whole culture out there that, 
is being lost and people don't know about and it's to be appreciated and respected. And uh, the Native people in Wyoming um, just have this tremendous relationship with Golden Eagle spiritually and, and physically. So that's really uh, part, part of the film that we can't wait to get out there and film. Well, I look forward to seeing your film, and it's called Golden Eagles, Witnesses to a Changing West, and it's by Wild Excellence Films in partnership with Wyoming Public Television. Thanks, That's David. correct. Yep. Thank you, Emmy, so much. Absolutely. Thank you for joining us for this episode of What's Your Why? Brought to you by Wyoming Humanities with support from Wyoming Community Foundation and generous supporters like you. To learn more, go to thinkwhy.org, subscribe, and never miss a show.